Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be doing an oil change on the Corolla. A little bit different than some of my other oil change videos though. A couple of years ago I did a video doing a visual analysis on the 10,000 mile oil change on my Corolla. Now, it wasn't a scientific test, it was just a visual look to see if the oil was giving any indication it was breaking down. Since then I got a lot of comments, a lot of people agreeing and disagreeing with me about doing 10,000 mile oil changes. Now if you read the fine print in the Toyota owner's manual, it basically reserves 10,000 mile oil changes exclusively for highway driving. It's not recommended for the average person that's doing short trips, stop and go, a lot of idling, uh, potentially hauling heavier loads. It's really not for those type of situations, but low stress situations like highway driving, it is recommended for. So despite the fact that I'm putting 10,000 miles between oil changes on this car, the run hours and the heat cycles on the oil are relatively low. Because when I drive to work, I drive 40 miles at a shot. So I'm racking up the miles very quickly. Every day I'm doing 80 miles when I go round trip back and forth to work, and it's really low stress. I set the cruise control on the highway. The engine's turning only about 2,000 RPM, but the ground speed is relatively high, so the mileage racks up pretty quickly. So uh, I'm going to be sending the oil out for analysis. I'm going to be sending it to probably one of the best known oil analysis laboratories out there, which is Blackstone Laboratories. A very, very well-known oil analysis uh, place. They offer these kits for free if you're looking to do your own engine oil analysis. Everything comes in this container that you see here. Uh, the container, this is what you send it back to them in. It has uh, prepaid postage on it comes with a little sample container with, that you will wrap up along with a plastic bag. Uh, then you just put your information down on here for when they uh, analyze it and they just have some basic uh, tips and recommendations. Now as far as the car itself, I've been doing 10,000 mile oil changes since the beginning. I for the most part have been running Toyota filters. I ran a few Bosch's but mostly Toyota's and I have been running uh, mostly Mobile One. The first few oil changes were complimentary from Toyota but since then I've been using this Mobile One. It's not the best oil but it's a very good oil. A good group three oil. Uh, I could run something more expensive and better but for the driving conditions that I see I don't really need anything super exotic or expensive. I don't need a race oil or anything like that. Uh, the engine's running low RPMs, really low stress. So the oil doesn't really get beat up like it would in a high performance car or a high performance driving or towing situation. So this is what I've been running since then. And the car's got now 130,000 miles on it. I've been trouble free miles. There's been no issues with the car. The engine doesn't make any weird noises or anything like that. But now this is going to be a scientific test once and for all showing what the condition of this oil is. I'm also going to be getting a, a TBN test which basically analyzes the additives in the oil to show how many additives from the manufacturer are actually left in the oil to see exactly what kind of condition this oil is in. So I'm just going to go ahead and drain it out now. It's pretty simple collecting the oil. Basically, you just want to warm up the car. And once the oil starts to flow evenly out of the sump, you just take a collection and fill this to the top. You then wrap the sample container in this, put this in the plastic bag, fill out your information, put it back in the container, and you ship it out to Blackstone. And hopefully um, we'll be getting the results back in about a week or so. So I'll go ahead and just grab a sample of the oil now. All right, I went ahead and cracked the sump loose, so I'll let this start draining and grab a sample. One thing I want to note about this oil is that it, this car does not burn any oil and I do not add oil in between any of the oil changes. So the oil coming out of this right now is the oil that's been in it since the beginning. I also do not add any additives to the oil. So this is completely pure. So now I got a nice full sample of this oil. Uh, cap it off, I'll clean it up, get it prepped and I will now be shipping this out to Blackstone to see what exactly the oil looks like. Hey everyone, so I just got my results back from Blackstone Laboratories and they turned out to be even better than I thought they would. So just to cover the basics again, Toyota 1.8 liter four cylinder engine. This is the only engine available on 15 Corollas. Uh, the oil Mobile One 020, again, just your standard Mobile One. This is not the uh, Mobile One Extended or the annual or high mileage or anything like that with the 10,000 mile oil change interval. 
What I like about the Blackstone results is they give the comments section, which basically sums everything up. So what they basically said was the Corolla was in really good shape. And they're recommending that I extend the oil change intervals even further than 10,000 miles. Uh, they said check out the wear metals, which I will compare in a minute. They stayed very close to the average number during the 10,000 mile run. Uh, to the far right, the averages for the engine are based on 7,400 miles. So this really isn't a direct comparison, these uh, universal averages, but they are basically comparing other Toyota 1.8 liter engines, which average 7,400 miles and mine are, my went 10,000. So I have about 25% more mileage on this oil than the averages that they have. So they all held up very well. The uh, TBN was very good. The total base number of additives, I paid a little extra for that test. And the viscosity was normal. Uh, the TBN basically showed that there were still active additives to spare. So this oil wasn't even at the end of its life. So they told me to check back and do another test at 12,000 miles, start building trends. So I could basically go further from there. Now I'm probably just gonna stick to 10,000. That's good enough for me. Uh, I'm doing about 18,000 miles a year and the oil was in the engine for about seven months or so, seven and a half months. So that's less than two oil changes a year. That's good enough for me rather than having to constantly get this retested over and over again. So uh, now we'll go over the elements. These elements are in parts per million, commonly referred to as PPM. Now they he put the universal averages on the side here. I just got another test and basically just, you, I will put these next two. The other ones, just so this is a little bit easier to read. So again, not really a direct comparison, but kind of gives you a rough idea of what they're seeing on other similar engines. So aluminum, uh, like these numbers were plus or minus slightly, if not on par. So the engine actually performed very well. Uh, aluminum, which you're gonna find in pistons, and in this case, the block and heads are aluminum, uh, iron, which you're gonna find in the rotating assembly and the valve train. Uh, copper, which you're gonna find in anything that has brass in it, typically things like bearings, that actually ended up being even less despite I having 25% more mileage on this oil. Uh, molybdenum, uh, that you're gonna find, that's a additive. They also, some manufacturers put that on piston rings to help prevent wear. Uh, some of these other metals you'll find in older engines, there's none in this one. And then things like potassium, boron, sodium, calcium, Magnesium, those are usually various additives that manufacturers put in the oil. They're things like uh, detergents and some of them are anti-freeze additives to keep the oil from freezing when it gets really, really cold outside. Um, silicon, will, you will find in things like seals and gaskets. And then the last two, phosphorus and zinc, those are anti-wear additives. And as you can see from these numbers, I'm plus or minus these numbers only slightly, so the oil held up uh, very well. And then finally, the properties on the bottom that I'll cover. Obviously, the should be is on the right, and my car is on the left. So the first three, the viscosity, which are at operating temperature, and the flash point, all within the values. Uh, typically, these top three, if they're low, that means that there is usually oil, um, fuel or solvents in the oil. So that can mean excessive fuel dilution. If they're high, that usually means that the oil has oxidized or there is soot in the oil. Uh, fuel percentage, that gets into fuel dilution, it's supposed to be less than 2%. I'm at less than half of a percent. So that means that the oil is getting a lot of time at operating temperature. Uh, antifreeze, that basically shows no antifreeze at all. That means the head gasket is not leaking at all. Uh, water percentage, none. Typically you'll find some water percentage if on cars that are seeing a lot of really short trips, like you start the car for a few minutes and then turn it back off. It's not uncommon to get a little bit of moisture in the engine because it's not getting up the operating temperature and burning it all off. Insolubles is basically going to be particulates or things floating around in the oil that basically are in the oil that may have gotten through the filter. So fortunately it's supposed to be less than 0.6. I'm at 0.2. So that means that the uh, oil filter is doing its job. If there was a problem with the filter or it was bypassing, that number would be much higher. But since that number is so low, again, 10,000 miles, the oil filter is still doing its job very well. And finally that TBN number, total base number of additives, it needs to be more than one. I'm at 3.7. So plenty of additives left. The oil still in good shape and could definitely go even further if I needed to. 
And the TAN, that would just go into additives. But again, I don't put additives in my oil. I just stick to what's in the oil from the manufacturer. So basically this test came back in absolutely spectacular shape. The oil was in really, really good shape despite all the criticisms I got from the first video I did, which it was just a visual. A lot of people told me that I was gonna wreck the car. I was gonna blow up the engine. It wasn't gonna make it to 100,000. It was t totally destroyed. Well, this is a scientific test from probably one of the best known uh, oil analysis laboratories out there. And they're telling me not only is the engine in really good shape, but I can continue to go even further on the oil. So this is a pretty definitive answer to whether or not 10,000 mile oil changes can safely be done. And again, depending on your exact situation, you might be able to do this. If you're doing a lot of highway like me, where it's a lot of mileage, but not a lot of heat cycles and not a lot of run hours, you should consider 10,000. If you're doing severe duty, a lot of stop and go, short trips, idling, sitting in traffic, this might not be for you, but this proves once and for all that 10,000 mile oil changes can safely be done. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.